I know you got the opportunity to take office a little bit early, right? About two weeks. About two weeks. So I know I know you're obviously very knowledgeable about the workings of the agency, having worked there before and worked in the area. Are, were there any real surprises in your short tenure so far? You know, I think how, how much this agency does with as not as many finances as we all think they need to have, and that's been one of our goals this session is to make sure we put some money into this agency and aggressively ask for it. I think the industry has propped this agency up for quite a while, which we all appreciate. Right. But as commissioners, we've not been over there asking, and we are for the first time in probably about 10 years. And one of the biggest things, and I'm told we still have green screens in this agency. I'm not sure that's right, but it's not that much better. We're working on, we have an IT plan that was developed in a six week period because the IT director has only been there two weeks longer than I have now. So um, he has come in, developed a plan, gotten feedback from industry and the, and the general public and we are out trying to get money for that as well, which is $21 million, not insignificant, but we think a good upgrade that sure. this agency needs. And I would quickly hasten to add, it's my understanding that the industry is very supportive of your getting those additional funds. They have been and we appreciate that actually because not only do we need that, but we're trying to also add some pipeline safety inspectors, which is clearly needed across the state, and as well as in, in West Texas, I think we'll appreciate this, trying to, to get some salary parity across the industry, and, and we've got a cost of living challenge, particularly out in Midland, that we're trying to add some money to. Salaries issues, that sort of thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, I know that I'm not sure exactly what the demarcation point is of the uh, shale, the beginning of the shale place, but I heard this morning that oil production is up 71% in Texas. And that may be right, that may uh, be right. That we are the Saudi Arabia. I mean, would you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. 10 years ago versus today in terms of the oil and gas industry? We know, off, right now we're, we are producing 1.3 million barrels of oil a day out of, mm -hmm. out of Texas, which is a huge increase. Our pri the production of natural gas has gone down some, partly because of the price. It's three fifteen, right? Three dollars and fifteen cents, which is down. So I think if the price as the price starts to go up, hopefully we'll see a lot more drilling in the shale areas where there's natural gas. But with new technology, particularly out in West Texas in the Eagleford area in the Permian, um, we're seeing a huge explosion of growth and. And I think we've got a real opportunity going forward, not just in the state, but in the country. We expect within the next five to 10 years, we'll be drilling 2 million barrels of oil out of, the, out of this state alone. And um, if we start using our natural gas more efficiently and more effectively, that means we have an opportunity to be energy independent, I think, in the next 10 years with our friends in Canada North and Mexico. America. That's right. North, North America. America. Yeah. Yes, sir. That, would be, that would certainly be a great, a happy day for everybody. Hopefully, the administration will see the light on some of those issues. We'll see. We've Help got some challenges. Uh, it's a real challenge. Um, natural gas. Uh, some have advocated uh, restrictions on export of natural gas. I was wondering if you have any uh, feelings about that issue. Uh, you know, I think it's clearly a federal issue because they have to get permitted with LNG through fed, the federal uh, process. We've got two LNG terminals that have now turned, or one that's been permitted, one that's, that is um, <coughs> shipping oil out. Chenier just spent, they're estimating about $100 million in the permitting process, but they're also putting a add an additional $5 billion of, um, of revenue and cost into their LNG terminal. So that's, and that's in the state of Texas. And we're, they're estimating it could, to do an LNG terminal in the, in the country, it's a $10 billion investment. So that's something here. I think that um, you know there, there's two sides of the story. Do we we've got low natural gas prices as evidenced by three dollars fifteen cents, and do we use our own and, and keep it inside the country, or do we get active in the open market because it's fifteen dollars across the world? You now have uh, you now have Russia who's announced this past week that they're going to start, and they are the natural gas world. I mean, they are the largest natural gas producer. Or they're going to start aggressively now trying to ship it and sell it on the open market. So what, what do we do as a challenge? And I think that's a policy issue, but I think we've got a lot of natural gas and it might not be a bad idea for us to, to look at all those issues. And I'm not sure how much the price would go up or not, but you, you definitely for producers to get active in the natural gas industry again and start drilling again. In fact, we're four rigs down this week in the Barton Shale up in the Fort Worth area. 
um, for us to, for that to be active again, you've got to have a vibrant market. And so, well, what would you think would be uh, would cause increased uh, drilling activity in the gas area in terms of the price? You know, I think first and foremost we've got to start using natural gas on in our cars, and right. I think we're doing that now on some fleets, but we don't have a an integrated um, market to do that. So you can't go to a gas station and fill up your car, so to speak, which they do that in other countries. So we know the possibilities there, but the infrastructure is not here. I think that's one of the challenges, and I think one of the opportunities we've got to, to develop the natural gas market. What, what, what do you think it would take? I mean, is it going to take a massive investment by the federal government or the private sector, or what would be a scenario under which more, uh, substantially more vehicles on the roads are driven by natural gas. Well, I don't think the federal government ought to get involved in okay. much of anything. So <laughs> I think that's first and foremost. Softball number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the private market has some real opportunity, and they're looking at it. You know, obviously tax breaks are always nice and tax credits, but um, but if, as far as the federal government, they don't need to be involved. So we're seeing more fleets, though. And UPS is a good example across the country as they are replacing their fleet. They're now putting natural gas trucks on the mark on in their fleets, and so but they've got a home base to go to. We've got school buses in this state, and we're doing that with. We've got fleets as far as our cars that we're trying to do that with as far as state government cars. So slowly ramping up. I think. Right, right. Well, obviously, there's a lot of promise in that regard. Uh, the uh, the whole issue of, of course, we don't have the issue so much in Texas, but across the nation, we have the drilling, the issue of drilling on, uh, you know, federal lands. Uh, where, where do you see that going? I mean, do you see a critical mass developing that will bring that about, or do you think that uh, will be status quo like we've had for the last four years? Well, you know, that's where our forefathers were smart, I guess, in Texas when we became a state. Right. We didn't give up a bunch of our land, so we don't have the federal land problem. But, you know, I, I think we've got the challenge we've got, you've got 35 states now as, as producing states. For congr congressionally and otherwise, we've got to, as an industry, I think, start educating people about the oil and gas industry. I think that's one of the, the opportunities that a commissioner has is to go explain what Texas is doing the best at right. and why we, why we have a lot of drilling and what is going on in our economy. You're, but you're seeing, I know states like Ohio have been to Texas to see what we're doing well, not just regulatory-wise, but to see what companies are doing. So I think as, as we continue to have states and they see what it does to their economy, there's opportunities to go explain to the federal government more so. And I know that, that our host today has been active on the federal side as well, being um, up there explaining and, I, and our we've got some congressmen in some good places by the way to help us so i think there's some opportunity but this administration i would think is overly friendly to us they might get the natural gas that thing because i think they realize that solar may not be as cost effective as they thought what about the keystone i mean what is your do you have any thoughts as to what the administration might have might have to do any insight i don't have any idea i think no. that they ought to they should have permitted it four years ago right. so we're ready to go in texas uh, the Railroad Commission obviously is a state agency and, mm -hmm. and uh, attempted to go through the, the uh, sunset process uh, last session and it was just uh, simply uh, this, what we call a safety net bill where the agency was reenacted as is. Uh, so you were allowed to continue on your important roles. But again, once again, you're up for sunset. Uh, could you give us your thoughts on the sunset and what you would hope to achieve? What might not want to see happen that sort of thing. You know, I think thankfully we didn't go through it. We didn't pass through sunset last time. Right. You've got a totally do, different commission, frankly, than you did several years ago. You've got three new commissioners who weren't there when we started sunset two and a half years ago. You've got a new executive director. And so we are a different agency than we were two years ago, which is a real positive. You have all three of us agreeing where we are on sunset recommendations and actually agreeing where we are on budget requests. So that may be a new world for what's gone on over there in the past few years. But so, you know, I think sunset, we are going to have an easier time. Obviously, we went through the process a lot easier. It was nice when you said I came in early. It was nice they waited for me. I got my, my right. first duty two days in was to go testify in front of Sunset. So um, I was glad they were. But no, I think that we've got an easier time. I do think, and, and I think we've all said this publicly, the one piece we'd like to see out, frankly, out of the Sunset recommendations, and we haven't seen a bill yet, is um, to have the ethics recommendations pulled out. If you're going to do make some recommendations and limit 
spending and limit um, fundraising for one statewide elected official, you ought to do it for everybody. Sure. And so I think that's the, the biggest concern left in the bill. And I said one of the issues is name change. And, and I know a bunch of people like Railroad Commission, we're actually doing more on railroads, so it may not may make a lot more sense at this point, but um, the recommendation is Texas Energy Regulatory Commission, and TERP doesn't sound completely appealing to me. So hopefully the legislature in their, um, in their smartness will either leave us as Railroad Commission, if that's our option, or Texas Energy Commission might make a little bit more sense for us at this point. What are some of the other things? You mentioned there's several things that are positive that you see in the Sunset recommendation. You know, first and foremost, they don't take anything out like had been suggested and move it over to SOAS. Our gas regulatory stuff stays with with us, which I think makes good sense. Um, they leave us a three-person commission. We all stay elected, which I think was a real challenge last time, a real conversation. Um, and so I think overall they leave the agency whole. There's some, there's some good – and to this agency's credit, before we I got there – there had been some recommendations like changing how we do enforcement as far as making sure there's some firewalls. Those things have been done internally already. So I think the legislature recognized that too. Okay. 